I know you've been waiting for these updates for a while now in terms of changes that have occurred and that will occur with the Medical Council of Canada qualifying exams MCCQE part one and the MCCQE part one preparations. You would definitely want to stick right to the end of this video as I will uncover the recent changes that have occurred and the most recent one that occurred just at the start of this month on April 1st. These changes definitely affect international medical graduates and foreign medical graduates as well as Canadian medical graduates as well. So if you stick right to the end, I will unveil all of these different changes and what you should expect. The timelines in terms of you taking the exams and how that can affect your score, which should definitely affect your capability of getting into residency and marching through camps. I will take you right directly to my screen to rush you through the entire process. But before I do that, please, you wanna hit like and subscribe. And if you are an international medical graduate that has succeeded in the MCCQE part one exams, please, and you wanna share your experience, send us an email so we're able to respond and have an interview with you and bring you on board and help many others who are getting discouraged if you are a foreign trained medical graduate or a Canadian medical graduate that's already in the system and you're watching this and you want to share your experience, you want to help those who are still preparing to get into the system, please send us an email and we will be happy to come to you to get an interview to then share your interview with many others who are on the journey and looking lost and they feel confused. So getting back into the subject, let me take you directly on my screen where I'm going to show you all the details and all the changes that have occurred. You want to first come here and see the new publications that are made. So these are dates in January 24th to February 21st. These MCC Part 1 final results are now available for this particular sitting. And you have scheduling that is also available if with respect to the NAC exams. You can have your annual report here. You can see some of the details right on this very particular page. So on this news publication, you usually have some stuff. So but we're looking at it recent changes that have occurred. We have that announcement that was done in June 2023 as to the fact that the QE part one will be changed and this change was supposed to take place from April 2025. So you now have the new exams will have 230 multiple choice questions. So as part of the key adjustment, the clinical decision making component will be removed and the current nine hour exam appointment will be shortened to six and a half hours. So the exams is going to become shorter. And I definitely think it's it's time for us all to agree that we are supposed to study a little bit harder because if the exams become shorter, then for sure we need to then study more. And a portion of the questions will still be piled out as they do right now. When I wrote the exams, we were still doing on the old model for nine hours. And the MC, the MC queries will be presented in two sections now, 160 minutes each, which is scheduled for the five minute break in between. So that's what it's going to be, which is um, very appealing and sounds very good now to facilitate the transition and to ensure seamless delivery of the exams in april 25 the january session will not be offered um what will happen is that there will be only three sessions of the exams in 2025 so guys if you're preparing for the exams you want to take into account that there's only three sessions um next year 2025 and so if you want to take your exams earlier you can either take it earlier or you can have a little more time to read and prepare there for the exams as the January session will not exist in 2025 but then you will only um, start in April of 2025 and the total number of testing days over 2024 sessions will remain the same though for this year these are the sessions that are for this year this one is soon to take place and it's starting in the next seven days as a recording of this video and then we will have this particular session but particularly for this session the result will be in six weeks ideally you get your result in six to eight weeks about eight weeks after your last day session and then this is it this is a new model where you would have only three sessions in this year and the new questions and everything so you can look at the new model 
if you need any further information you can look it up right on this page right here and then on april 1st there's been major changes to that have happened with the canadian medical graduates themselves so what canadian medical graduates used to do is that they used to pay their fees in two sessions they used to pay it when they registered for the qe1 or they used to pay it when they registered for the qe part two but since qe part two changed in 2021 they have been paying the second fee when they are applying to get their licensure after they pass the QE1. But now what will happen is that they will completely, they will do everything at the same time. So just like in National Medical Graduate, when we pay for our physician supply.ca account, we pay everything before we can even register for QE1. Canadian medical graduates are going to be doing the same as, well, as us. And you see these are the fee structure currently. You want to make sure that you pay these fees because when I was doing it it wasn't up to 328 but fees just keep hiking and increasing year after year these are what are accepted mastercard and visa card you want to make sure that you have those and source verification fee has increased as well when i did it um two years ago it wasn't like that the mcc grid part one these are the cost fees is increasing NAC exams this is a cost as well and then the licensure application this is it the fees are non-refundable please so you want to make sure that you know that these fees are non-refundable and application for medical registrations these are the fees credential evaluations these are the fees that are right here and these fees tuition tax credits are available for the mccq and the NAC exams as well as some mccq so once you have the receipt and you're living in canada you can be able to claim this when you file your taxes and these are the appeals so if you want to extend your exams you feel like you're not ready you need to push it you would pay 117 dollars appeal fields if you think that your results are not exactly what it's supposed to be and you really strongly thinking that you passed and they gave you a fail then you can appeal so that it's recorrected but i highly discourage this because you paid this high and the most part 99 percent of the time to tell you that you failed but there are a few cases that people have appealed and it turns out they actually passed you can do a pre-scheduling request fee appeal fee for the NACs also same as the qe1 remember these fees most of them are usually not referring to with lmcc now let's get back to scheduling page once you have agreed that you take the exams Place, it's really very essential to remember that you could do it online or per center so when i took the test i took the test using the prometric system a prometric system is very tricky because you take the test at home you can take it at any time there are many people who take it at home depending on how they function so make sure first of all you check your system to make sure your system is okay so before you schedule your exams please check your system now and on exams day you have to download one of them so i use mac so i had to download this funny story is that on my exams day when i hadn't started the test so after i got checked by the local or the remote proctors then but my screen was fixed i didn't go to the exams page i sat there for the next three to four minutes and i said hello i am not seeing the questions i'm just here and then they said oh really we already sent you the questions to start we've already launched your exams from our end and i was like but i don't see anything on my screen and then they told me oh just restart and get back in i had to restart get back in and i was rechecked again by another doctor and apparently the previous person that was there was a little kind he made notes but they still had to do the entire room check which took me a little bit of time but then you usually have about 14 to 15 minutes to do this so luckily i was still on time i don't know what happened at that time but you just want to make sure you check um your computer first so for instance here you can just check this it says start check and it'll check your operating system and see i'm using a mac um then this is for the resolution it passed and it'll check with the microphone so i have to record as i'm recording right now with you and then i'll play the test playback record as i'm recording right now with you and then i'll play the test playback so once you're done that you can just click proceed camera just check as well just passed and then your internet speed you want to know that you have at least something complete you see you're gonna have this that it is complete and it's all good and you can close and then you're really pretty ready so please you want to make sure that this is in country you can watch this video to get a little more in terms of what a check looks like but yeah that is how you can do remote proctoring or you can just get an appointment and go to a center and you can do 
French woman proctoring as well. It does exist. Just do the same procedure. Be careful with your time zone because you have to pick the test with respect to your time zone. Make sure once you get in there and you're booking, you make sure your time zone is okay. If you have special needs and you want to book, you can book right down here. And then you have a 16 digit confirmation that will be sent to your email. Say your exam is starting at 7 a.m. You log in at about 6.40, put in this 16 digit number that will be given to you. And once you put in that number, you are then able to kickstart because it's going to be your identification and you will kickstart. So that is exactly how you do it with your 16 digit confirmation number you put it in there and then you can extend your eligibility window remember we've seen the costing what that is going to be and that is exactly how to schedule your appointment so you cannot extend your exams or you cannot change your exam state if you're 120 hours before and you can if you have a major problem that is making you to not be able to take that exams immediately you write you should send an email to this telling them that you had a problem or you can send it through your physician supply.ca account telling them that you had an extenuating circumstance i have had one extenuating circumstance and so my particular session was cancelled for me and i could reschedule and i paid nothing just make sure you tell them within seven days after you've written that exams those are the new changes that you have and please study hard good luck okay that's it so thank you so much for sticking right up till the end i hope this was useful and helpful to you if you want to be a part of our community please send us an email we will come right to you we'll bring you to part of the community because we are looking for it to helping and bringing all foreign trained medical graduates and even Canadian graduates together to support each other to make the system a better one. If you would like to be a part of our community and talk to us, please send us an email, type your comment in the description. And if you type your comment in the description, I can assure you that we can be able to send you a list of our top pick based off of a survey that we did with lots of candidates who have passed the exams, their top pick material. That way it orients and it narrow down to your study guide and your time so please thank you very much stay tuned like share and i'll see you in the next one peace